So you received some bad news. You were diagnosed with a deadly disease. If not you, then a close family member or even the loved one or friend itself. When that news hit, it seemed as though life in itself paused altogether. You notice that everything around you um, is around you is happy and everyone is going about their day as usual. Everyone except you. You are now in the state of shock, a state of denial. Is this diagnosis really true? There is no way you may tell yourself, I didn't experience any symptoms. I can't eat right now. But I know one thing, I'm a believer. And I know that there is no way that this could even possibly have happened to me. Then later comes down the flood of tears as you deal with the gruesome reality. Thereafter, regret, remorse, and blame. The blame, yes, it starts sometimes with yourself. Then it goes to others. Then it goes to genetics and family. Do you know that the gospel is filled with such people as these, as you and me? After traveling with the disciples, Yeshua asked his disciples, who do people say that he is? Who do, the, who do you all say that I am? Before, But before we get there, let us just talk about some of the things that have uh, witnessed and miracles that have been performed by Yeshua thus far. You've read about the feeding of the 4,000 with seven loaves and um, four pieces of fish. The mute speak, the maimed are made the whole, handicapped walking, the blind see, the demon possess or exercise. The man who walked on water and led Peter to do the same thing. He fed 5,000 with five loaves and two fish. A woman suffering from a hemorrhaging for 12 years stopped bleeding. The dead has been resurrected. The man even controls the winds and the waves. With all of that said, and even demons are exercised, therefore they responded, these disciples, based upon what they have seen and heard, they said, some say John the Baptist, but Elijah, others say Elisha, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say I am? Notice a shift here, right, with the questions. Let's analyze these questions for a moment. First, Yeshua is taking account of what is being said about him as he has done miraculous things. Then it moves from the question of the outsiders to the question of who do you are, my disciples, who say that I am. So the question of the hour is who do you say he is? It was evidently clear that Yeshua was more than John the Baptist, more than Elijah, more than Jeremiah, or even one of the prophets. Peter, who witnessed all of these miraculous events and even experienced a miracle as he himself walked upon the water, knows exactly who the Messiah is because he gets it right and he declares him to be the Messiah, the son of the living God. But check this out. Peter didn't answer Christ's question based upon analytics or intellectualism. No, Peter answered from his heart. He answered from having a intimate relationship with Yeshua, from walking with Yeshua, from living with Yeshua, from hearing the very words out of his mouth, from eating, sleeping, praying, and traveling with this man. Peter answered, therefore, from his heart. Thus, he got the answer right. Notice that none of the other disciples could answer the question. It was only Peter who answered. The response to what others say who he was, he got a response from them collectively, the disciples. But the, the answer that came from who do you say I am came from Peter. Today, this question is then asked to you. 
Yes, you are who are listening to the sound of my voice through this YouTube right now. You have read this scripture. You have seen with your very own eyes that the blind indeed see. Those who were hemorrhaging have stopped, the mute hear, the handicapped walk, the dead are raised to life, and even Christ and Peter walk across water. In your very own life, has he not fed you when times of doubt, of times of drought, and in times of lack and despair? Here you are today, living, breathing, and functioning very well. He gave you a job when other employers would have turned you down and when others got furloughed. He gave you a house and a car by some insurmountable odds when everybody else's response was no, his was yes through that lender. Remember when you were sick and he made you well within a matter of a few days, but didn't he take care of you and now you are recovered out of many wonderful and miraculous things. Think about all the things he has done in your life. The question then is asked even to you, who do you say that I am? I know the diagnosis is bad news. Yes, I know that it has feel, made you feel discouraged and weighted down. It left you even to question if God is truly really on your side or even if he simply even cares. It is frustrating and it is fearful all at the same time. It keeps you up at night and oftentimes depressed and in tears. It is the first and foremost thought of the day and it is a lasting thought. Not to mention suffering through the times of loneliness during this depression season and stay at home season called Corona. But with all of this, the, the question once again is moved from the disciples, from Peter and now to you. But who do you say I am, says Yeshua? You know when he, when taking account of all the miraculous things that he has done in the book of Matthew, I have noticed something quite puzzling in all of these miraculous encounters of all of these healings. And it is this, it is the faith of the individual player that ultimately makes the difference. It makes them well and it brings the healing to them. Jesus says to the woman who was hemorrhaging, who touched me? He said that along to all of his disciples about this woman. He said, and the disciples said, well, there are many people around you, Rabbi, that are touching you. He said, no, somebody touched me because somebody derived power out of me and the woman came forward and then when she came forward yeshua says to this woman hemorrhaging for blood for 12 years your faith has made you whole perhaps this diagnosis this trial this corona has come upon you so that you can answer the question of who do you say that i am let me make this clear. If you believe him to be the son of God, the Messiah, then you have your prognosis. Therefore, Yeshua, your God, is looking for your faith. It will ultimately be your faith that will get you through to the healing that you need. The Bible says, with the faith of the size of mustard seed, you can move mountains. This is a mountain and it shall and it will be moved. That's not much. And I rose here today to tell you that your diagnosis is not your life and you are not your diagnosis. Yeshua says that I have come and I've come that you might have life and life more abundantly. Yeshua is the life more abundantly. There is a bomb in Gilead. With your faith, make your plea to Yeshua for healing. You know, as the three Hebrew boys 
became more relentless, more serious, and more devoted with their life unto Yeshua, they were attacked by King Nebuchadnezzar. They refused to worship the idols to which King Nebuchadnezzar had set the king of Babylon, Babylon had raised up and set before them. These three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, refused to bow before this idol. And what happened? God, they were thrown actually into a fiery pit of which Nebuchadnezzar lit the fire seven times hotter. But you know what? Those three Hebrew boys, although they were thrown in the fire and the fire was burning as hot as seven times over, those three Hebrew boys, they were not burned because there was a fourth man in the fire. And that fourth man in the fire is Yeshua. What is this all about today? This is your fire pit. Your diagnosis is your fire pit, but you're not in it alone. There is a Fourth, there is another person like the three Hebrew boys. The fourth person in the fire is Yeshua. If these three Hebrew boys can survive that fire and the, the lame can walk, if the blind can see, if the possessed can be exercised, is your request really all that big? Don't you tell God how big your problem is. You tell God. You tell your problem how big God is is hypertension god is bigger diabetes god is bigger breast cancer god is bigger chemo god is bigger radiation god is bigger somebody is suffering somewhere out there somebody's child suffering with hiv god is bigger and he can even heal that don't let negativity and doubt from the enemy drowns you or burn you. Although your fire is seven times hotter, God is your water source. And I promise you that if you would go to God with your petition, just like that woman hemorrhaging with blood for 12 years, you reach up and you touch the hem of his garment and be made whole. But it, it's all about your faith. Your altitude is, is determined by your attitude. You want to go high with the Lord. You believe every word that he has done and every miraculous miracle that he's performed, including the birth of your kids. Then you today believe and you say to God that I know who you are. You are a healer and I receive my healing for you today. I leave you with this last scripture. Therefore, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. You're not in, in this alone. You will not die. You will live. Every day I want you to get that in your heart that you will live. Do you believe that today? Now go to your prayer place, go before God, and you tell him that he is your doctor. He is your healer. He is your redeemer and salvation. And this too shall pass. God bless you. I'll see you on next time.